were playing Galway Girl by Steve Earle, and specifically the instrumental bit that Sharon Shannon wrote. And if you don't know her, she's an amazing box player. She wrote this, she's done all kinds of cool stuff, trad stuff, modern stuff, played with everybody on there on Earth, and she puts on a great show, so definitely check her out. I'll link some videos of hers down below. Well, I'll link this video, the original of this, so you can check it out. This is one that's been kicked around. I've thought about doing it, but I've been so hardcore into trad stuff that I kind of put it off. But now I'm playing it. I'm in a band that plays it, and it turns out it's a really fun song. It's a great song. It's one everybody likes singing along to. The instrumental bit has sort of an A part and a B part. It's not really played that way like you would hear for a regular tune. In the beginning, they really just play what we're calling the A part. Later on in the song, after a couple of verses and choruses and whatnot, they do A, A, B, I think. So that's the part that I'm going to run with all the ornaments up tempo, then we'll go break it down. Now, when you're playing this, you can play it either on the lower octave like I did there to preserve hearing, or uh, when I'm on stage, I jump the octave sometimes and it gets nice and shrill and gets people who are pounding lots of drinks more interested, I think. So you can play it either way. For purposes of our own sanity, we're going to play it down the octave. Uh, so here's the basic melody of the A part. first half. I'll run that again. I'll try and keep it nice and slow. Hopefully you can pick that up. So again, first half there. The second half of this first part, A part, jumps back up to the B. I'll run that. You may have noticed it's not just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's got some kind of off beats, back beats. Uh, I don't know what you call that. I'm not much of a music scholar in that regard, but it's not always hitting the downbeat is the gist of it. So I'll run that again from the second half. Play the whole thing so you get that. We'll run this together if you're so inclined. That's the whole A part. Now in the beginning of the song, uh, after the first verse chorus, I think, somewhere in there, uh, it just plays that bit, then they come back around for another verse, and then the sort of instrumental break has both that part twice, A, A, and then there's a B part. Now the ornaments that I like to do for this, I try to build it around the rhythm of the melody, because it's different, it's not, a, again, it's not a reel, it's not a jig where it's just bump, 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 bump. It's got a bit of a groove to it, so I would do, tend to pop those to kind of taps that fall off those, those kind of crossing noises. So as I hit that note, hit the one below it. That's it, nice and slowly. And then another cut just to separate those two Ds that you're, that you're starting with. Cut that, uh, I do kind of a combination of a slide and a cut. And I don't think I've ever really talked about that specifically. It works well for slower marchy type of things like this, where you're doing a combination of two ornaments, but they're two fairly simple ornaments, I guess. So, so as you, uh, before you do the slide, I should say, do a cut first. So you're combining that cut with a slide. 
And then you, the second time through, you can kind of chain that into a short roll. Now, really, it's just a tap, but because you're starting with the cut, you got a slide in the middle. It's sort of like an elongated short roll. And it just has that kind of a cool groove, I think, when you do. Again, as you land back on that F sharp, tapping or sliding off that E below it. That little pop finger bounce thing, I do that a lot. Uh, in this case, going from an F sharp to the E. That's what I'm doing there. Sliding up to that B, to me that slide always just works really well and not just for slower uh, rhythm, slower melodies like this, but that big jump from a, a bottom D up to the B. I think it sounds kind of cool. So, tapping the B, so you slide first, because your basic melody is, you're holding one note, I guess that'd be a dotted quarter and then an eighth, I think, something like that. That little bubble there on the on the B is just a cut. And that's one where typically if you're doing a cut, you want it to be really quick, right? But in that case, it's nice to elongate it a little bit because it kind of gives a little bit of that C sharp note in there and makes it seem a bit more intentional and a bit more, um, I don't know, dramatic maybe? Probably not the right word. because you have a bit more time. It doesn't have to be just super quick. And then as I hit that E, A, B, C, D, E, D, E, F, G, A, as I hit the A, I do that same popping thing. So as I hit it, and again, that, that landing on that F sharp, I tend to do that a lot. When I'm coming down to an F sharp, it just feels sort of natural to, to, to tap the note below it or slide off the note below it. So that little line, the ending of the phrase, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Ultimately, we're just sitting on that B note for a bit. That's your basic melody, so. A couple of rolls back to back you could do. I like to bounce off that higher D. Just to change up that melody a little bit, give it some more Irish character that I think works pretty well in the whistle. Short roll there, just to punch that note up a little bit. Otherwise, there's not really a whole lot I'm doing on that little rundown thing, as far as ornaments go. You could tap that F sharp, or I do anyway sometimes. I like doing that in that spot because it's accenting sort of an unusual beat. You're not hitting a, a main beat. Um, and if you can do it subtly, I think it sounds kind of nice. And again, sliding up to the, C, to the F sharp. That sort of double cut thing, I've demonstrated that a few times in other videos, but... So as you land on that E, you're just doing the cuts on these two fingers here. Tap first. That's one that does kind of have to be fairly quick because you're jamming a lot of stuff in there. So up tempo would be. And it just gives that note kind of a cool accent, I think. Now the B part, again, is really, it's only the first half of the B part that's different than what we just covered, but it does start on that B for at least three beats, I think. That's the beginning of your basic melody there, so. That's how I tend to do it. So sliding up to the, to the B, which I think I mentioned before earlier in this, in the A part, but. And then you can tap that. That's how I fill those notes. So it would be a cut, a tap, another cut. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Ah, and then a short roll. Feel free to keep it simple, of course. You don't necessarily have to do all that. All that was was just tonguing and one grace note.
tapping on the on the A as I land on that. Short roll there. Another tap. And the short roll to finish the phrase. Then it comes back around. Which is what we just covered before. Now, structure-wise, again, in the beginning, we're doing just the A part, which is... And then you'd be into the verse. So that's what I would consider one A part. Then you could double that for the instrumental bit. So it'd be that twice, and then... That's not to say you necessarily have to do that. If you're playing this song in your own bands, it's a cover, you know, you can take some liberties with it. Don't have to, but you can. With our band, we do something a little bit different. We repeat that last line. So uh, at the end of that kind of instrumental bit, that's something we came up with that's fun to do. And that's really my favorite part about playing songs like this, is kind of just tweaking them a little bit and trying to make it your own. So mess around with that if you guys dig this song. Uh, hopefully that'll work as far as getting you up to speed on the instrumental bit. Let me know what you think. If you want me to do more songs like this, drop me a, a note in the comments. Uh, I tend to stick to traditional stuff, but I'm not completely opposed to doing more modern songs too. So let me know. Otherwise, see you guys in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>